If there's a million the Batman fans, I'm one of them. If there's a hundred thousand the Batman fans, I'm one of them. If there's ten the Batman fans, I'm one of them. If there's five the Batman fans, I'm one of them. And if there's one the Batman fan, you're looking at him. And you know what? I, I don't I don't think this outfit's gonna gonna cut it. Give me just one moment. There we go. That's much better. I'm 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 not I'm not wearing the mask. I, I just can't do it. To sum up this intro, I love the Batman, okay? So if you like the Batman, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. So why am I making this video in the first place? It's a great question. I want to thank my friend over at Nando V Movies from the Nando V Movies YouTube channel for creating another one of these collaborative events, the one last scene or the one excellent scene, the one marvelous scene kind of deal, uh, where we're going to go ahead and take the final scene of one of our favorite movies, TV shows, anything pop culture related, and basically give praise to it because in his original video, it's basically referencing the end of everything because 2023 had a lot of endings. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, discuss one of my favorite endings to one of my favorite comic book films, one of my favorite films of all time, Matt Reeves' The Batman. So if you haven't seen it, I recommend you click off this video because I'm going to be spoiling every. So whether you've already seen the movie and you want to hear my thoughts or you don't care about spoilers and you're still here, thanks. So I love Matt Reeves' as The Batman. Um, it's on my top 10 movies of all time. You know, I am a huge fan. It blew my expectations out of the water. I'm a huge fan of Matt Reeves as a director and a writer. So when he came through and created the Batman, I found his take unique from the very first camera test that we saw. And it was in the red lighting, similar to what we have now, and Robert Pattinson first putting on the Batsuit. Um, I have found this movie to be incredibly faithful to what Batman is supposed to be. I found it really unique that this movie decided to basically run with the idea that the Batman is an experiment run by Bruce Wayne and we're basically catching up a year and six months in now with the whole Riddler case and we follow Bruce on his uh, basically his character arc going from being super vengeful Batman to then being the hopeful Batman that we'll see in the Batman part two. But the narrative through line of this movie is basically seeing Bruce Wayne go so far with the Batman that basically Bruce Wayne doesn't exist. And I found that very interesting because I love the dichotomy, I love the duality of Bruce Wayne and Batman, and I'm super excited to see how Robert Pattinson plays his more playboy persona or whatever aspect they want to go down or which route to go down with their Bruce Wayne in part two. I'm very excited and optimistic to see it, especially with the ending of this film. Because like I said previously, Batman's whole arc in this movie is going from being the vengeful vigilante and someone that even whenever Batman is saving civilians, those civilians are scared of him. They are scared of him because they think they're going to get beat up too. Instead of seeing him as the hero that he's trying to be during this experiment, he's trying to rid the city of its cancer or its plague, basically. And I love over the course of this film that he's being tested by the Riddler. We're learning more about his relationship with the GCPD, with Jim Gordon, uh, with Selena Kyle and the Penguin. There's more and more elements being added onto each other, building Gotham throughout Matt Reeves as the Batman that I really appreciated. It had great world building, great cinematography, the tone, and just, let's be honest, the vibe was awesome. I loved it for its entire three hour runtime, but for me, what I love more than anything in these superhero movies is seeing a satisfying character arc. I like seeing the character start one way and end in a different way. It's completely outrageous for me to even talk about that on here. That's an insane thing for a film to do is have a character change over the course of a story. So try not to kill me in the comment sections there, but I, I find that to be the best part of these comic book movies is seeing the trajectory of these characters. So over the course of the three hour runtime, we get to see Bruce Wayne go on this arc. And the final scene of the movie solidifies that and makes it clear and concise what he is going to be. And he has to become more than vengeance. He has to become hope. And the way they express this is once again by bringing in the Something in the Way song from Nirvana throughout the finale of this movie, which it started with the monologue in the beginning with Bruce talking about his experiment and how it's been going the last year and six months with Something in the Way playing in the background. But then we also end the movie the exact same way. Instead of us getting another like end to the journal, it seems like almost he's starting a new chapter with the end of this, with another ending monologue talking about how the city is no longer really under threat of the whole Riddler's flooding plan. Like there's obviously going to be ramifications for that, that damage just doesn't go away like right away, but they're repairing, they're starting to see the new uh, life that could be given to Gotham. They're seeing the positives here, the new change 
from the course of what happened in the movie and it's very optimistic we're seeing the new rise of power of the penguin and it's all very very emotional and stylistic and that's another thing i love about matt reeves as the batman is that it just has sauce it is cooked with sauce and oil and seasoning it is beautiful because this movie really feels like it's made with passion and love and isn't just another product so for me when it comes to other like Marvel movies or stuff like that, one of my biggest discourses with Spider-Man Homecoming is that his arc throughout the film is learning not to be a Tony Stark underling, not having to use that technology, becoming the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and, and having more confidence in himself. And he achieves that through the movie, but the movie decides to roll that back when he's given the Tony Stark suit again and then teasing the Iron Spider suit and his next appearance is getting the iron spider suit and they basically wipe the entire friendly neighborhood spider-man thing from existence for two movies to me that's disrespectful to what the movie was setting up and the batman does the opposite of that it solidifies the notion it solidifies the character arc of him changing becoming a better batman and one moment in particular that i love about this final scene is during his monologue basically there's this woman on one of those uh helicarriers i, I don't know what they're called with the paramedics and they come down and they're doing the helicopter and they're like the paralifters those people right they're on like that gurney and she she reaches for batman's hand as she's going up and she wants to hold on to him and i found this moment really profound because once again in the beginning of the film that one gentleman that was being saved by batman like when he comes out and he's like who the hell are you supposed to be and he beats him up and says i'm vengeance that whole moment ends with the civilian being scared of batman they're scared of him i get it when the when the light hits the sky it's not just a call but a warning to them like, it's awesome, right? It's super badass. And that's what I love about the movie is creating this wonderful image of Batman. And he's so cool. But that's not exactly how Batman should operate. He shouldn't just be vengeful or someone that everyone's scared of. It should be instilling fear into his enemies, not the civilians. The civilians should like Batman. I feel like the way I love Batman is when civilians like Batman. You know what I mean? When they're fans of Batman... It's great. It's groovy. So the course of the movie is everyone kind of gaining trust of Batman. When the city's flooded and he drops down and he has the flare and he's walking through the water and he's leading all the people out of there, I'm like, that's Batman. That's Batman. That's my guy. And that leads into that ending monologue. And whenever she's grabbing onto him because she trusts him, she sees hope in him that she, that she was saved. All these people were saved because of what Batman did. This experiment isn't a failure necessarily. He just needs to change his outlook. And he learns to change his outlook. I'm really excited to see the, the first beginning uh, trailers or promotional material for the Batman part two because of this ending. This ending absolutely solidifies the notion that Robert Pattinson's my favorite Batman. And I really entrust Matt Reeves to take this character wherever he wants to take them because this movie was so faithful to the essence of Batman. And he's a detective. There's a more noir-esque art style to this movie and the way they go um, uh, uh, like around their story plot structure right i could go all live long day when it comes to the batman and maybe someday i will but that ending scene really does a great job at giving you the themes of the movie showing you exactly why this movie exists where batman's gonna go from here it is a full story character arc that's wrapped up in a nice three-hour bow that i can't stop watching so for me and maybe all of you guys or maybe you disagree with me and that's totally fine the ending to the Batman is absolutely my favorite ending to a comic book movie, at least in the last half decade, maybe the last 10 years, just because it felt like it had soul. It felt like it had a heart. It felt like Batman was real because he went through real change. No longer is he going to be the vengeful man in the sky fearing like that everyone fears him. It's only going to be the criminals. And now because of his actions, Batman saved him. And now they've gained the trust. Batman's gained the trust of the public. And what does he do with that moving forward? Now that he has that different perspective, the perspective of hope, not just being the dark knight for you know the criminals, but being the symbol of hope for the community and of Gotham, that's really cool. And I think there's a bunch of different story opportunities that can come from this. Now, obviously I just saw Nando V Movies post his video and I saw a couple other subscriptions in my, in my feed um, posting the one last scene. So I wanted to hop on here. And talk about it and i know i didn't break it down frame by frame i'm more about talking about the essence of this movie what the point of this movie was and how it resonated with me and resonated with other audience members and hopefully you guys of course let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below make sure to like comment subscribe i would really appreciate it um but i wanted to come on here and just talk about the batman because i can't stop every single time i get a chance 
to talk about the Batman. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. From Ben Affleck's Batman, if there's even a 1% absolute certainty that blah, 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 whatever he says in Batman v Superman, which I don't mind Batman v Superman. I have a whole video essay on that one too. So don't think just because I'm a Robert Pattinson fan that I hate Ben Affleck, okay? That's not how it works. I can like Zack Snyder's work and Matt Reeves and what James Gunn's doing with the DCU. But I'm most confident in this Batman. I have full faith in Matt Reeves and everybody working on the Batman part two. I'm super excited to see it. Once again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. And um, I think that's about it. I've got work in a few hours, so I need to edit this and get it up. So see you later, guys. Have a great day.